Hey guys, and welcome to my first ever sprite animation tutorial. So this is going to be the first episode of the series, and the series is going to go for a long time, hopefully. But right now, I just want to get through some real basic stuff for the first episode, so we don't have to come back to it later. So I'm just going to make... All this doesn't really matter for now, because I'm not really going to be animating much in this part of the tutorial. But I'm just going to be walking you guys through sprites, bitmaps, and different types of symbols in Adobe Animate slash Flash. So first of all, I want to get out of the way that I'm using the latest version of Adobe Animate. So some of this will still apply to like older versions, but obviously when it comes to more technical stuff, which we shouldn't be getting into in this episode, it might be a bit iffy, but it should relatively stay the same. So this is our canvas. So Hang on, I'm just going to change the colour of this quickly because it's blinding me. Just make it the same background as the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is just go and get a sprite real quickly. So I'm here on the sprite as a resource. This is the website where I get all of my sprites from, unless it's custom sprites where I get them from other sources. But generally, this is where I get my sprites from. And this big image here is called a sprite sheet. So all, every single little box on here is part of an animation so every single box is different frame of animation for specific animations it will be labeled here so idle bored bored unused so it's all it's all labeled generally in these sprite sheets to import this to flash slash animate um i really don't like just doing a copy and paste because it takes forever to load it all in depending on your pc specs it really just it really just slows it all down so what I like to do to speed it up is to open the snipping tool and what you want to do is just drag it over. So you want to make sure that everything is in a full size because usually when you go onto the sheet first, so sometimes it says click to full, um, to full size it, so like that. So now this means we can import it in and it won't be blurry at all. So let's just get the idle and uh, the idle sprite and just drop it in there. So this shouldn't be blurry in theory. So what we want to do to turn this into a sprite. So right now this is a bitmap, and we can't do anything with these. It's blurry. You can't any, you can't do anything. You can't really crop it. There's nothing you can do. So what you want to do is you want to select it, go up to modify, bitmap, and then trace bitmap. And you want to have these settings for every time you trace a new sprite or trace a new bitmap. You want to have the color threshold as one, the minimum area one pixel, corner threshold as many pixels, I mean not many pixels, many corners, and the curve fit is pixels. So you just press OK. And now it's, oh, it's higher quality sprite, it's in the pixels that we want it to be. So now we can just cut away all this extra stuff that we don't need just by click, dragging, whatever. Just want to get rid of all the other stuff that we don't want on our sprite and there we go so when you select the sprite it will be in different pieces it'll be in the pieces separating into like different the colors whatever and you can't do anything with this so what you want to do is you want to right click on it and then you want to go to convert to symbol so right now we're just going to call it idle and you want to have it as a graphic so I'll explain the differences between these in a minute but we'll just leave it as graphic and press OK and now it's actually a graphic so now we can actually do stuff with this so we can if we wanted to just have Sonic drag across the canvas we can use that and it works So I'll get into the differences now between the different types of symbols. So I'm actually going to go into my Sonic 3 sprite library that I have saved. So this is every single animation that I have for like the sprites, whatever. So I'm going to explain the difference between the three different symbols, one of which we really don't need ever. So let's just use a jog animation. So we're going to be focusing on this and this is a graphic 
So this symbol is a graphic, which means that when we drag across the timeline, we can see it move. So this specific sprite, we can see it move as we drag across the timeline. So that's the cool thing about graphics. If we change it to a movie clip, we won't be able to see it move if we drag across the timeline. So there's an obvious advantage there. So this, this is especially important for walking animations where you want to see how many times they're taking a footstep so that then you can animate it accordingly and then it doesn't look like they're just sliding across the floor. However, movie clips can be placed inside of other symbols and it won't affect it at all. So it will still move and everything. It, it makes it a bit easier when you're animating with symbols inside of symbols inside of symbols like I do a lot. Another advantage of the movie clip is that you get extra effects. You can do some extra blends and renders and stuff like that. So all of this is really complicated stuff. So I don't really expect anyone to be like in on this, but we can add filters. We can add a shadow if you wanted to. It's really complicated stuff that we don't need. Whereas with a graphic, we can only do some basic color effects such as changing the brightness, the tint, and the transparency, which for some reason is alpha. I don't know why it's called that, but... And a button is really useless, especially for sprite animation. A button would be used for, say, if you were making like a flash game. So this would be useful back in like the Newgrounds days of like 2009, but not anymore really, because nobody makes flash games anymore. It's not useful at all. So you can just forget that the button ever exists. So here's what I mean by using the graphic to its advantage of being able to see the movement. So this isn't gonna look too good because I'm animating on 30 frames for this example. I normally do 60. But if I just make, if I just go over here, create a new keyframe. So how many steps does Sonic take in this time? One, two, three, four, five near enough let's just make it five so i'm just going to delete this because we don't really need it actually no i could just hide it. it takes about five steps so now if we just move it across to there then it doesn't really look like he's sliding across he needs to move a bit further but the advantage of that is that we can see how many steps he's taking in that time without having to actually open the preview so if we had it as a movie clip, he would just look like that. But if we open the preview, then we can see it move. So that's why that's so important because you need you need to know the differences and how to use it. So so I'm opening my um, my Sonic Mania sprite library, which is massive, and basically I'm going to show why movie clips may be useful. So I just have this basic monitor and as you can see, this is all one frame. So the monitor is a graphic because that doesn't have any animation. The static, however, is a movie clip. You'll see that there is frames here. So this is doing things, but it's just one frame big. However, if we go into the preview, just to zoom all the way down and it moves. So that's why that's useful because then it saves time, it saves frames, it saves a lot of energy because you don't really need to be perfect with this. Like I could make it go out to here if I wanted to, which may or may not be the correct amount that it needs to be extended by to make it loop perfectly. However, it's still gonna loop perfectly. So that's why it's so useful. And I can further this forward by, let's get just an icon, just put it in there. So I have an open slot for it, just so it's easier to, so I'd have to keep making a new slot. And we could just, it doesn't really matter where this goes. So as you can see, this has frames as well. So if you look, the border moves slightly, so it's just a little bit more movement. So the border of this moves very slightly. And if we go into the preview, it also moves. It's a bit blurry, but it, it moves as well. It's a bit quick, but it moves. So that's why having this is just always important. It's just always very important to have that. So this was just a very basic first episode, guys. I'm sure in the next episode we're getting into more nitty gritty territory, but this is definitely very beginner friendly. 
so in the next episode I'll probably be getting into some more advanced stuff as opposed to this like motion tweening stuff like that so I'll see you guys in the next episode.